Has this ever happened to you when you were trying to do this? If so, let me help you. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delonda. It's me again, Delonda, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, trust me when I say I know the frustration that comes with trying to get this film to go through a sublimation printer. Remember, this is a hack and this film is not really intended to go through the sublimation printers. In today's tutorial though, I am going to show you all of the tips and tricks that have worked for me personally. Now, I'm sure there are more tips and tricks you can try. I'm only showing you the ones that I have used and that have worked for me. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The first time I successfully accomplished the sublimation DTF hack, I accomplished it by using this image on a Gildan 100% heavy cotton shirt. As we are looking at the tips and tricks, it's important to categorize them because some of the tips and tricks are only related to the computer while others are definitely only related to the printer. Let's look at the tips and tricks that will only involve the computer first, and then we will move on and look at the tips and tricks that are directly related to the printer. The first thing I highly suggest you do before you even start printing or trying to print on the DTF film is make sure you have the updated drivers for your specific printer. So as you can see, I'm on the Epson website. It's epson.com forward slash US. And what I would do is go to search and I would just type in the model of my printer. So 2760, and I'm looking right here at the EcoTank 2760, not the refurbished one because mine was not refurbished when I purchased it. So I'm clicking on the printer and I'm going to click on support. And right here, I'm looking at the recommendations. So right here for me, since I'm using a Windows 10 operating system, the recommended settings or the recommended drivers for me would be the drivers and utilities combo package installer. So I would go ahead and download that. Now, I don't need to download this because I really already downloaded this, but depending on what your um, message is or what um, is recommended for you, that's what I would suggest you do first. So before you do anything, before you go to Microsoft Word or any app or anything like that, make sure you have the drivers downloaded from the Epson website that match the printer you are using. Okay, now let's move over to Microsoft Word. I am in Microsoft Word, and if I were going to be using the A4 size of DTF film, the first thing I would do is just stretch out the margins here at the top right and left, and I would do the same thing over here all the way over in the left margin. I would just stretch it all the way out. The next thing I would do is go to layout right here at the top and I would change the orientation from portrait to landscape. Now I'm going to insert the GNOME file that I had just shown previously. So I'm going to click insert. I'm going to go to pictures from this device and I would navigate to that GNOME file. When the file comes in, it will not be sized at the exact right size. So what I would do is right click on the file. I will go to wrap text and I would choose the tight option. Now, none of this will matter if you're not using Microsoft Word, but use the options that you have available for what app you are printing from. So since I'm printing from Word, this is what I would do. Now, I would also just kind of uh, resize the file to make sure that none of it is going to be cut off when it's printed from the film. But I would probably also make my file a little bit wider because I'm printing on the film. I have a little bit more wiggle room. 
Okay, so now I'm good to go. I think this is the perfect size. I can look at my file. It looks great. So now what I would do is I would go to layout again and I would select size. This will give me the opportunity to select my paper size. So by default, the paper size is already on letter, which is 8.5 by 11. But the DTF film, which is A4, is not the same size as letter. So I will select A4. And as you can see, my paper or my film size is bigger than the eight and a half by 11, just a little bit. OK, so now I can see that I can, you know, resize my image. I probably need to resize it again and I can still make it wider if I wanted to. OK, so the next thing I would do is I would make sure on my layout where I'm in the size option that I'm selecting the size of the film that matches the size that I'm printing. So since I'm printing a four, I'm going to select that. Then I will go to file and I will go to print. I would navigate to my sublimation printer. And in my case, I'm printing from my Epson EcoTank 2760 series printer. And when I look down right here, I'm going to make sure that my paper size is set to A4, 8.2 by 11.7. So now I would go to properties and I would go and make sure for my document size, A4 is selected, it's on landscape. For quality, it's on high. For paper type, this is very, very important. I will pause right here and make sure you have a chance to screenshot these settings. Okay, A4, orientation landscape, paper type, photo paper glossy. Now, if you do not have the option for photo paper glossy because you are using a different printer than I'm using, you can choose any of the options that give you a glossy option. So you can have ultra premium photo paper glossy or premium photo paper glossy. Either of these will work just fine, but I'm going to keep mine on photo paper glossy. I did not make any changes right here. I do keep the print preview option on. The next thing I'm going to do is click more options and right here, document size, A4, output paper, same as document size for color correction. Mine is still on custom. And if I go to image options, cancel that. If I go to advanced, my color controls are on Adobe RGB with the gamma set at 2.2. I did not make any changes right here. OK, so I'm going to click OK. I do have mirror image on and I do not have anything else selected. I do not ever use the high speed setting, especially when I'm using my sublimation printers. I never, ever select high speed. Now, if this option works for you exactly like this and you get ready to send your film through the printer and it prints, you are good to go. However, if you get ready to print and your film actually goes through the printer, but you have roller marks or extra ink, let me show you what to do in that case. You can click on maintenance and you can go to, let's see, you can go to extended settings and right here at the bottom, for me, now this is what my printer looks like. Yours may be a little bit different. So right here for print density, right here is by default is set to zero. If you want to decrease the amount of ink that comes out of your printer, you can just decrease the density by negative five, or you can even go to like negative 10. That works also. The only thing that does is decreases the amount of ink that will come out and it will not impact the quality or the color of the uh, image that is printed. Now, I'm not going to decrease my density because I haven't had any issues with roller marks or anything like that. OK, so right here, I'm not making any changes right here. I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything right here. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to 
go back right here to more options, making sure that my image is going to be mirrored and I'm not making any changes right here. I'm going to click OK. Once I click print, a print preview will show up. So let me do that. So let's look again. I have my Epson Ecotank 2760. I'm printing the whole image on one side, A4 paper. OK, that is exactly what I want to happen. So now let's move over to the printer and make sure that the printer matches what I just did here on the computer. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. My first tip is know which side is up. The film that I use is the Welliser brand. It comes in a package that looks like this. Now I did label mine with the A4 8.3 by 11.7, but the packaging looks like this. It just says DTF transfer film. Now with the Welliser brand on the package, it lets you know that all of the film is placed uniformly face up in the package. So one way for me to remember that is that I just keep mine in the package and I only take out one sheet of film at a time. So it doesn't matter if I'm using the A4 size or the A3 size, which is the larger of the two. I still keep one, keep the packages face up and I only take out one sheet at a time. So when I'm ready to put the film in the printer, I take out the one sheet and because I know that my sublimation printers will print with the print side facing me, when I'm placing the film in the printer, I remove it from the package just like this, and I will place it in the printer ready in that same exact position. That is one tip that you can try. Have the film. I'm going to take one sheet out. I'm going to insert it in the back of the printer. I want to make sure that it is facing in the right direction. Previous settings A4 Premium Semi Gloss. You can have it on any type of gloss that you want. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click Print from the printer. And I'm actually going to hold the film to make sure that I guide it through the printer. Paper type does not match. Click uh, confirm current setting. I'm going to click OK. Continue printing. I'm going to click OK. Holding the film to make sure it's going to go through. It says the paper is out. I'm just going to click cancel. It did not recognize that there was paper there. So I'm going to go back and do it one more time. I'm going to click OK. Continue printing. I'm going to click OK. What I'm going to do now is put some paper behind this to support it. So I'm just gonna grab a stack of regular printer paper, just a stack of regular printer paper. I'm gonna put the film on top. I'm going to stack it up and put this in the back tray. Now I'm going to set the edge guide. I'm going to click the um, diamond. I'm still going to hold this to make sure it's going to print. 
Okay, so it looks like it's going to go. Let's see if it will print a full sheet. Okay, so our image has printed out completely. I will be very, very careful about this because this ink is very wet. Okay, so I will be ready to pour the powder or apply the powder to this because it's very wet. But instead, let me print another one, but this time I'm going to decrease the density and we can compare to see how they look different. But you can see I don't have any roller marks. I have a completely printed image on the A4 paper or the A4 film. So we're gonna do one with less density and then we will print another one from the Epson EcoTank 15,000. have my paper behind it, one sheet of film, okay? And let's see how it looks different with, okay, so we just scrolled on through. Let's try that again. So there's too much paper back there. Canceling that. I'm going to take some of this paper off. Try it again. Looks like it's going to work.
All right, let's get a look at this one. Now this one was printed with less density and typically I only use this setting when I have a streak or roller marks, but as you can see, there are, seem to be roller marks here. So let's look at the color settings though. This was the first one that I printed with just my regular sublimation preset. Okay, this is my regular sublimation preset. This is with less density. So I just decreased the density by five. All right, so I'm not sure if that's a result of, I'm not sure what that is a result of. But this is this one, the first one. And here's the second one again. Now let's print one from my Epson EcoTank 15,000. Let's go back to the computer. I'm back in Microsoft Word. So I just went to a new document. Now, since I'm going to be printing from my Epson EcoTank 15,000, I can print a bigger sheet. I am going to be printing an A3 sheet. So what I would do is go up here to the menu and I will go to layout. I will go to orientation. I would choose landscape and I would do the same thing that I did the first time with the margin. So I would just change all the margins, stretch it all the way out, stretch it all the way out over here, stretch it out over here and stretch it out down here as well. The next thing I would do is go to size and this time the size is A3. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for A3, which is the 11 by 11.7 by 16.5. So you can see how big that is. So now I'm going to insert a picture from this device. And I'm just going to use a family photo um, that I downloaded. So I'm going to select this photo. And it comes in really really big already let me decrease the view so we can see if it is uh, sized appropriately for the paper so it doesn't look like it is so what i'm going to do is right click on this and i am going to select wrap text i'm going to choose tight and that will give me the option to move it as much as i want to now what i want to do is just make this a lot bigger I want to take up as much of the film as I can. And I think this, this looks good just like this. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is click file. I'm going to click print. I'm going to navigate to my Epson EcoTank 15,000. Okay. I'm going to go to my custom settings, but before I do that, I'm going to still check here that it's on landscape and that my size the size of the paper is a three one page per sheet i'm not changing anything there i do have it on custom margins i'm going to click printer properties at the top right here paper source where it says auto select i just keep that on auto select document size is a three for this i'm going to change this to uh, photo paper glossy quality is high I'm going to keep that just like it is. I'm going to select print preview. I am going to go to more options, document size A3, color correction. I'm going to custom and advanced, and I'm going to go to color controls. I'm going to select the Adobe RGB. I'm not going to make any changes right here. I'm going to click OK. I do not need bi-directional printing on, but I do want to have it on mirror image, even though I don't have any words here on the photo. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click print, and I should get a print preview. Your margins are pretty small. I'm going to say yes. This is my print preview. I am going to click print, and we will be back on the camera. Here we are at my Epson EcoTank 15,000. I'm going to click print 
and let's see what comes up on the screen. It says printing, even though there's nothing in there. So let me try that again. Okay, so for my paper source, it should not say this. For paper type, I'm going to select um, A3. So I'm scrolling down. A3. And paper type, I'm going to choose glossy. I'm going to select OK. And now I'm going to go back to the computer and I'm going to click print. So I'm just holding it to guide it. Let's see. Making sure that it stays in the same direction. So this time, instead of just putting the paper back in, I'm going to put a couple of sheets behind it. So I'm putting, I have two sheets right here. I think it's going to print. So this is, I'm gonna be very careful about this, about touching this. This is the printed image on a large um, A3 film. And since I've already printed this, I have to use it on something because it just looks so good. So even though this wasn't the goal of the tutorial to you know go all the way through the process, I might as well since we are here. I ended up putting that big, large photo on an 11 by 16 sublimation puzzle and it did not turn out very well. This is, <laughs> this is it right here. It's so dark. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to see what I could do with it and it just didn't turn out well. I don't think I would try it again. Maybe I used too much powder. I'm not sure. But at any rate, hopefully one of my tips and tricks will be helpful to you as you go through the sublimation DTF hack. I have shown you everything I know. Now, if you're using a different printer than what I have, I really don't know what other tips and tricks to show you or share with you. Um, you might try looking at a few other channels to see if they have other tips and tricks or hacks that might be helpful to you. If you did find this helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and 
Thanks for watching. Bye.